but that in itself wouldn't be holistic. So um, basically, what I would say with the spirit is, when we're not really in touch with our spirit, we feel lost and misguided, like we're just walking along with no guidance. And um, one image that comes to mind, there was this picture that I seen, and it has like, um, it's the footprint in the sand. And basically, it was saying, there, you know, the footprint in the sand, there was only one footprint. So this person, you know, they felt like maybe I'm alone, but it was God, you know, there helping them get along their journey. Now, I'm going to read you a quote from uh, Dr. Bach. And um, he was... Uh, a pioneer, you know, with flower essence and addressing the uh, um, emotional and spiritual aspects of healing. And um, with his quote, it says, "Disease is, in essence, the result of conflict between soul and mind, only eradicated by spiritual and mental effort. Effort directed to the body alone only does superficial appear. This is harmful because the apparent." Recovery hides the true cause of illness, which gains in strength because it was never addressed. And we see this time and time again. With our regular, you know, everyday allopathic medicine, they address the symptoms of the body. So when you have um, a diagnosis like cancer, you know, they, um, they cut it out, they radiate it, whatever they do, but months or years later, you'll see that the cancer comes back because the person is still living the same lifestyle and is still, you know, eating the same diet and still basically in the same pattern of what led to the cancer. One second. <laughs> and um, reading on uh, Dr. Bach, he also um, pointed out that illness is not a bad thing. And I've seen this time and time again. Because when you when you get to the point of disease, it's been, the, the disease has been there, but it just has now shown up in the physical body. So a lot of times when you have an illness, you will see that you weren't on your path and your purpose. So when I heard Adam's story, you know, of everything that he was going through in his life, that disease and illness brought him to a journey, you know, took him through a journey where he started getting on a path to wellness. And he was able to go to school, you know, and know that he wants to help blind people. So I, I would say, you know, disease is not a bad thing, it's a good thing because it gets you onto the path, you know, of getting in touch with yourself and finding your purpose. And I've seen this with a lot of people. It was only through illness that they could find the strength, you know, to uplift themselves and do what they really need to do in life. <clears throat> and um, I, um, I call this uh, lecture Full Spectrum Healing. I do have some handouts. Someone can pass them around for me. <laughs> and um, we've all heard of um, like Full Spectrum Light and um, the Sunlight. Is full spectrum light, and when I say full spectrum, I'm talking about uh, I'm addressing the uh, the color spectrum. And the easy way to remember the uh, color spectrum is by Roy G. Biv. Everyone got that? Roy G. Biv, and that starts at the base of the color spectrum all the way up. Roy, red, orange, yellow green, blue, indigo, and violet. So, and I've, I've seen this, I've seen this, um, this color sequence so many times. Now, I've seen it in, I'm, I'm beginning to see it in like toys, because they put it on xylophones, because um, each color is a certain frequency which resonates with a certain note, a musical note. And I bring up full spectrum healing when it deals with the chakras. You can relate it to the chakras. So when I say um, full spectrum healing, I'm 
also talking about holistic healing and applying that to the chakras. Each of the chakra is a certain color and it corresponds to different uh, elements in our lives. And I'll go into that a little more. Does everyone know what chakras are? They're energy points. It allows the energy to pass through us. Mm -hmm. And when your chakras are open, you're more energy spiritually based. You have more clar uh, clarity. Uh, anyone know how many chakras there are? Seven. Seven? The chakras are, it's, it's actually as far as human being a spiritual evolution. It is um, when you are more evolved, most people are covering in first, second, third chakras. And then as, as they further become more involved, there's um, a point where the Kundalini starts going up higher and higher and higher. When one attains enlightenment, all seven chakras are fully experienced. The energy is fully running through all of them, and especially out of the Brahmi chakra out of the top. And, uh, and that's when everybody has the full capacity for the third eye, on the understanding of everything and seeing everything. So that's what it is. It's a Kundalini is woken, and then it comes up through the body like the you know, the, the serpents on the, the medical, you know, design thing. So that's what happens. Yeah. And there's a lot more to it. There's yeah, it's a, it's 32,000 knots. It's a whole things. lot more into the chakras. And like you said, most of the people in society are only on the first three chakras. Yeah. So that basically deals with physical life and, you know, everyday things, relationships, sexuality, you know, um, security. The survival instinct. Basic survival. Yeah. But once you can get to this fourth chakra, this is the bridge. Because it bridges the physical and the more spiritual levels. So right now, I'm hearing a lot of emphasis on being at the heart. 